Hey everyone, Lisa Espinosa here. Welcome to day six, six of the Novena, Priestess Novena. So I'm so happy to be here with you today. How are you doing? If you've been doing the Novena since day one, I'm curious, how is that unfolding for you? What shifts have you noticed? What uh, memories have come up? Just how has it been for you? And most importantly, I want to remind you to not judge your experience, whether it's been great, whether it's been emotional, whether it's been great and emotional, or you haven't felt much. If you're feeling called to be part of this journey and you're committing to it, that's a huge, huge thing. And I've done many of this, these novenas and many times the blessings, I'm not aware of them till it's over. You know, it's so much is happening underneath the surface. So welcome back. If you are just connecting with me for the first time, my name is Lisa Espinosa. I am a spiritual career coach and modern day priestess. And the focus of everything that I do, whether it's connected to my first book, Answering Your Inner Calling, or the book I'm currently writing, Birthing the Priestess Within, it really is all about helping you to align with your soul's guidance and share your soul, your soul's gifts from that place. When we talk, when I talk about the priestess path, I'm adding this layer that whatever your career is, part of your medicine is to be a channel of unconditional love for yourself and for the world. And this priestess novena, which is a teaching from my second book that I that I channeled really, this novena prayer and process is all about clearing blocks, resistance, outdated beliefs, trauma, wounds, you name it, whatever can be in the way, right, of you being that open channel for grace, for love, for wisdom to flow through you. So Deborah saying, good morning, there's been so much moving under the surface as you say, yes, I have been, let me watching the replays again later in the day and drawing sketching images this energy is giving me. That's beautiful, Deborah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so that's such a great example, right? As, as we clear, right, in, in the novena invocation that we say, right, we say nine days to clear lifetimes of fear. So as that gets cleared, more can flow through us. Now, Deborah's talking about art, your creative expression might look different. It might be a conversation, it might be a blog post, it might be the way, uh, evolved way you talk, you talk to your clients or students. It might be a healing modality that you refine so that it's more powerful. I mean, there's so many ways that this is gonna come through. And it's also gonna come through in the way you respond to life you're gonna start to notice that some things will come up that perhaps in the past would have triggered you really intensely. And not, maybe they'll still, you'll still feel the trigger, but it's, um, one of my teachers said, it's like you're gonna reach to the old habit of how you respond, but it's like not gonna be there. Like you're gonna notice those sorts of shifts and those are really important to celebrate and to acknowledge. They might not seem like a big deal, but they are absolutely a big deal. So I really want you to notice that the ways that perhaps in the past something would have caused you to hide or to water down your message. And even though you still might feel the fear or the jitteriness, you're, you still take the steps forward. So all of that is cause for celebration. All of that is huge momentum and movement. So as you know, this specific novena, we're talking about embodying divine leadership and about healing your inner teen, right? That beautiful inner teenager. And one of the aspects that as I was connecting and preparing this morning that was coming up for me, was coming up as I was preparing and praying, it was like, oh, you know, your think about our teenagers when they fall in love, right? <laughs> Just how, and we can look back on teenage years and think, well, I was so young then, I didn't really know what love was or whatever, all of that. But I want you to look back on just um, the beauty of that time, right? The beauty of that affection and passion and love that 
teenagers can so easily connect with even if it's for like a like a you know a celebrity right it's like i mean i this was before my time but for some reason the beatles are coming up i mean meaning like i wasn't like around when they were up but you've seen the images and some of you might have been around where you know girls from particularly were so like oh my gosh and that still happens right so that like passion that heart connection can be channeled right that can be channeled for a love for the divine a love for source that passion right there is a book called the holy longing that i just that title so spoke to me like oh and so i can feel that that teenager within me that fuel of that passion of that connection of that divine longing is so important it is so easy to become jaded on the spiritual path it really is and and you know particularly if you've been committed for a long time i know that i get to those places sometimes where it just feels tedious or monotonous or boring whatever it is and i have to really catch myself and pray and and tap into that that fuel right that longing that heart connection that feeling that devotion and i've been really connecting with rumi this weekend i didn't even realize his birthday's tomorrow but i was i've been connecting with rumi i have a rumi deck maybe i'll i'll have it tomorrow to since it's his birthday and you know rumi is a sufi poet just so divine his poetry is like a love song to the divine right it's this very sensual um devotion and our teen brings that to us and it's so important it's so essential as we keep moving forward in our on our path and so the card that came two cards that came today you know been using the mother mary oracle which alana fairchild by the way is the same creator of the rumi oracle and we got Our Lady of Creative Choice. Look at her. Our Lady of Creative Choice. And it says, I'm not going to read all of it, right? But some of it. Our Lady of Creative Choice comes to you in this oracle with a special message. There is a situation in your life where you are contemplating making a decision. Perhaps it is even a bold choice and you are not sure about it. You are encouraged to be bold. Let me read that again. You are encouraged to be bold and to give yourself permission to choose whatever feels most authentic to you. Isn't that interesting that that's the bold choice? The bold choice isn't, well, let me do what other people want me to do. Let me water it down so people aren't uncomfortable. That's not the bold choice. That's the choice we've made many, many times, right? That's the bold choice Mother Mary is saying here is, choose whatever feels most authentic to you. And how do you know what's most authentic to you? The only way to know that is to do this inner healing work. Because if not, all of the burdens of codependency, all of the burdens of unworthiness, all of the burdens of self-sacrifice, all come up and water down your choice. So, if you are stuck in a situation and don't believe that you have a choice, this oracle brings you this particular message, you have a choice available here but you must surrender your way of looking at the situation to the Divine Mother and allow a new perspective to become available. So that is, she is bringing us that, that message of being bold in your decisions. Now, for some of you, this might be very clear, like, oh my gosh, yes, there's a decision in front of me that I've been contemplating. For others of you, might you might be wondering, like, what's the choice? I don't, there isn't some big decision. But please remember the little choices we make every day. Sometimes, and I wrote about this years ago, like the little choices are harder than the big choices. If you've been on the spiritual path for a long time, you might be so trained, right? You might have such a strong prayer practice or meditation practice, intuitive practice, that when a so-called big choice comes, you take the time to tune in and make a choice from your heart. But it's the little choices every day that trip us up so many times, right? It's the little choice of how are you going to spend your time? Like there was a little choice this morning, you know, I woke up and there was so much I had to do. 
I, my brain said. And I was, of course, also preparing for the novena. And at, at 10 o'clock, I also lead an online coaching class. And there's a whole bunch of other things. And at some point, I had about 40 I wake up very early, <laughs> about 35 minutes. And my very lovely parts were like, okay, make yourself your smoothie and then sit in front of the computer and we can multitask. Drink smoothie, you know, plan class. And I really wanted to do that. It was like, I felt all the momentum, but this is where practice comes in, discipline comes in. I could hear the little voice of my soul saying, no, that is actually not gonna be the most helpful. Like, yes, I had the urge, I wanted to cross something off the list, but my soul was saying, pause, you already did a lot, make your smoothie mindfully, <laughs> you know, put, sit down, drink it, don't multitask. And so that was a little choice, but that was a creative choice. That actually is when I tuned into Rumi's message and tuned into my teenager as, and her devotion and how much I needed that because parts of me were feeling a little uh, just uh, weighed down. So whether it's a, uh, Big choice or a little choice, you know, boldness, be bold. Don't take the familiar path. D embodying divine leadership is about stepping past your comfort zone. By default, it's going to be uncomfortable, right? So that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. That means you're doing it right. Now, uncomfortable doesn't mean traumatic, doesn't mean like you're going against your integrity. It means you're shaking in your boots, perhaps. It means you're feeling a little tender. It means you're like, oh my gosh, are people gonna like this? They're gonna judge me. All of that stuff that comes up that's normal, but you do it, right? So, um, yes, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, boldness has been a constant message, yes. Yes, absolutely. I think that that's, um, you know, boldness is something that sometimes we don't connect with our soul, right? There's all these other qualities of our soul, but, but do not fool yourself. Your soul is bold. Why? Because your soul's helping you birth a new earth. The same old isn't going to create the new earth. It's not going to birth the golden age of miracles that we're all here to birth. Right? Bold is having the new vision, having, and I just want to say this and go into the nine minutes after this. When you're on this path, your path will look different than everybody else's because you're birthing something new. That means that when you look at the external world for validation, it's not going to be there. Why is it not going to be there? It's not going to be there because you're birthing something new. Right? So this is the really, this is where the friction comes in because you might be writing a book or you might be channeling some artwork or you might be creating a course or a new modality or integrating two different things and you look around, right? And it's so interesting because our ego does both things. One is like, oh, everybody already does this. Who needs my medicine? We do that. But then we also do the Nobody really wants this. This isn't out there yet. No, I talk to people about it and they're confused or did it, you know, it's like we're looking for validation in the external, but Mother Mary and your soul is saying, do not do that. It is not going to be there because you're birthing something new. You're the one that's setting the new blueprint. Other people will look to you, not from an ego place, not from a narcissistic place, like I'm better or whatever, none of that but also no false humility here. If you have the courage to be on the spiritual path and do this inner work, then you have the responsibility to stand in that leadership role, which means you are ahead, not in an egotistical way, and that other people will look to you, not to copy you, but as an example, as a model. And the hard thing of that is that sometimes I can feel very lonely because we keep looking for outside validation, even from people we really respect and love, and, and they just can't give it to us because they don't have the vision, the bold vision that our soul is giving us specifically. Okay, so let's go into the nine minutes. And so if this is your first time, or if you need a reminder, you're going to sit on the infinity symbol, right? 
And today we're going to focus on that medicine of choice, the creative choice, the bold choice. Let's have these nine minutes empower all of our choices, the big ones and the little ones. And I feel like there's a particular medicine of those little choices that's coming. The little choice of how you speak to yourself, the little choice of how you respond to something, the little choice of when you pause. <clears throat> All those little choices that add up, you know, as one of my teachers would say, small hinges open big doors, right? Those are the ones that create the momentum. And yes, of course, if there is a quote unquote big choice, because the truth is to our soul, everything's important that you also have the boldness of your soul to make those choices. Yesterday I talked about saying, or whenever it was, I get the, the days start to get confusing in my head, but whenever I talked about the yo, the no, right? Saying no, the bold choice sometimes is saying no. The bold choice sometimes is saying yes. There's no like, it's not a cookie cutter thing, right? It's like, so we're gonna be emboldened, right? In our choices. No, no watering down, no making the choice that others would make. It's the choice that you're going to make. So get your beautiful candle out. I have mine here. Right. And I'm, oh gosh, and I forgot the other card I pulled because I don't want to forget this. Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion. I recognize suffering in order to release it. Curiosity breeds compassion. So there we go. Beautiful Kuan Yin. And she's reminding me, thank you Kuan Yin, that when we're on this path, it's so easy then to look back on our life and start to judge ourselves. Oh, why did I make that choice? Or oh, I shouldn't have made that choice. That's not what this is about. Please trust that you have a divine curriculum that you literally set up for yourself, right? A divine curriculum, you know, going back to that question, what has your life trained you to be? So even those choices that you made in the past that perhaps you're like, oh, those were mistakes. They were not mistakes. They were part of the training of your life. And so we welcome beautiful Kuan Yin to be here as we sit on the infinity symbol, being activated to make those bold choices that we do all of that with compassion and we look on our life with compassion, through compassionate eyes. And she's reminding me to add others. It is not our job to judge other people's choices. We, it's, that always comes from the ego. Always, no matter how smart we think we are or how enlightened we think we are or how wise we think we are, anytime we're judging other people's choices, please know that is not your soul. Your soul does not do that. Our soul does not judge. So we can have compassion for ourselves when we go into judgment. I do it. I mean, it just, right? But we can notice it and then we can say the prayer of, okay, let me see this through your eyes, beautiful soul. Now, I've noticed that I'm judging right now and I don't know what to do about it, but I'm willing. Please bless my vision. I don't, you know, it's like the world has so much judgment already. We don't want to add to that. So we welcome Kuan Yin. All right. So we hold this. Let's go. As this candle burns, my soul within me burns. As this wax melts, resistance in me melts. Nine days to clear lifetimes of fear. As I give, I receive. As I heal, I am healed. Doors open, I walk through. I am ready for the new. Resistance abundance <laughs> abundance comes with ease and grace for i have finally found my place all right so let's leave this here and resistance leaves right <laughs> i'm gonna put the timer and we're gonna do this together all right begin
some deep breaths. If you have your journal and there's something you want to write down about your experience, just go ahead and do that. Take a few moments. I'm going to drink a little water. <clears throat> Please take care of yourself. Remember that, as I said at the beginning, so much is happening under the surface. As much as you can have mindful moments throughout your day to take a walk, to journal, to dance, anything that allows kind of this openness, you know, take that opportunity. Take the bold choice, right? The bold choice doesn't mean to need to be the loud choice or the, you know, boldness can be very quiet as well so um, ask your soul about that I'm gonna pull a card and also remind you on October 17th I will have an in-person training at relax for life in Barrington I'm so excited it's the third time I do this specific training and it's really all about taking your career to that next level and it's going to be a journey, not a novena, but a journey through my book, Answering Your Inner Calling. You'll get a free copy of my book as part of the training. And it's just such a wonderful time and a wonderful time of the year to do this, right? As we get closer to the end of the year and prepare for 2022. So if this resonates, I would love to see you. Um, you can register through Relax for Life. I'll be sending information on my, on my newsletter as well. Okay. So let's see what message is coming from the Star Temple Oracle. Mm. Beloved Zeus, lovers, this cosmic union is destined for greatness. I love that we were talking about that passion, right? This cosmic union is destined for greatness. So look at this card. Look at the male and the female. And so there's so many layers to this card. Now, it could be partnership, kind of like that card with the sis Divine Sisterhood. But it's also, when I see this, it's that the cosmic union between you and the divine, between your feminine and masculine energies within that are going to then birth what's what they call sometimes in the Egyptian cosmology, the Horus. Birth that seed that we talked about yesterday, that seed you received. So, but there is that like sensual devotion movement. So this is saying like there's a, a way to access this that's not the intellectual way. It's not the let's analyze way, right? There's something about that movement and that passion and invite your teenager to guide you with that. She's a master at that. All right, lovelies, can't believe it. Tomorrow will be day seven. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. And I will see you then. And I know, um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. See ya.